Hear me, spirits of Fenris. The falling snow tells the story. The greatest of warriors. Master of the Space Wolves. The tale of the Wolf King. It began on the world of Fenris. A death world far from the Emperor's light. A vast planet of white. The land is stalked with the wolves of Fenris. The Thunder Wolves. The greatest predators of all. are the true masters of our planet. Our great leader was not born on our world. He had crashed onto the planet's surface as a child. The infant plummeted to the ground, crashing directly into the den of the Thunder Wolves. of the dead studied the child, ready to pounce and rip the small being to shreds. Something stopped the instinct to kill the child. None of the wolves made their move. An unspoken bond was felt. The mother of the Thunder Wolf then sensed the energy of the Primarch. The great She-Wolf raised the child as one of her own. The boy, raised by the Thunder Wolves. The child grew quickly, loyal to his den and his wolf kin. An equal member of the den, developing into an adult, worthy of the den's praise. All was well until the day happened when the wolf rage broke free. Natives of our world. A group of Enrizian tribesmen banded together trying to make sport of the beast that ruled the land. The small group came without warning. Murdering the den of Thunderwolves. Murdering the great sea wolf. Saw the death of his wolf kitten. The wolf man went into a mad rage. His den, his family, murdered for sport. He blew his rage into the hunters, purging twelve of the group with his bare hands. Ripping and tearing them limb from limb. Only two of the wolf pack had survived. The Thunder Wolves, Geri and Freki. The huntsmen all aimed their weapons at the savage beast covered in their tribe's own blood. The raging beast had ripped through them with ease. Fate intervened. One of the tribesmen yelled to the others to lay down their weapons. For this was no native beast of Fenris. This was a man. The hunters stood there in advance, seeing the man who sided with the Thunderwolves. He stood bloody. 
things ready to rip all in his path. The Primarch stopped his pursuit, recognizing the instinct and sign of peace. The tribe was unsure of what was to be done with the Wolfman. No mortal child or man could survive in the barren landscape of Fenris. The tribe led the Wolfman and the Wolfkin to their king. They were taken to the court of King Thengir of the Rust tribe. King Thenkir was intrigued by the youthful man. The aging chieftain saw something in him. Any being to survive on our world unprotected was worthy of life in his realm. The king decided to keep the wolfman under his own eye. The young Lehman was to be raised within the king's household. Raised as a true Fenrisian. The decision to keep the wolfman puzzled the people of the kingdom. What value could this murderous hound of a man offer to their realm? The king set to raise Lehman as a true warrior of death. Under the watchful eye of King Thengir, a wolfman began his training. It took little time for him to adapt. He learned their language, mastered their primitive weapons, he was a skilled warrior from the beginning. Demon soon realized that he was genetically a human, but also that of the Thunder Wolf. Yet, he was superior to both. He grew into the apex predator of Fenris. The Wolfman was named by the King as Lehman of the Rus. Lehman's reputation quickly spread throughout the planet. The man was able to rip entire oak trees from the ground. The man could turn entire armies with only a yell. The man who could wrestle Fenrisian mammoths to the ground and eat the entire creature. This is no normal man. Throughout his education, Lehman was loyal to his king. The king taught Lehman all he could in his remaining days. But soon the king died, leaving the tribe without a leader. There was no debate on who would rule next. The people believed in Lehman Russ and sought to benefit his wisdom. He was the greatest warrior of Fenris. And only a strong leader could survive the harsh planet. Thus it came to be. Demon Rus was now the king of Fenris. He was no longer the Wolfman. Demon Rus had become the Wolf King. The king's justice was swift and absolute. He was the sword of judgment that no man of beast could best. There is no warring tribe brave enough to attack the Wolf King. Under Lehman Russ's rule, a truce now existed between the wolves of Fenris and man. The court of Lehman was attended by the fiercest warriors of the land. 
and the most beautiful maiden's feet had ever seen. The story spread quickly like wildfire, until the ears on Holy Terra heard the howls. A feast was taking place. Maidens and lords from around the planet came to pay tribute to the Wolf King. When a large man entered the long hall of the Rus, a powerful psychic. For as the man walked, men began to kneel. Even the Venrisian wolves cowered their heads. The Wolf King stood tall. A true Rus would never bow to anyone without being beaten in contest. The man spoke, challenging the Wolf King in his very home. The man told the Wolf King to pick any challenge. If the stranger bested the Wolf King, he requested nothing but to drink the rest of the night with the tribe. The Wolf King commanded if he were to win, the stranger would serve the king for a year. The two accepted the game. The first challenge, the art of the feast, an eating competition between the two men. The challenge begun. The stranger ate well, but was no match for the Wolf King. He ate more as a wolf than as a man, devouring all before the first plate was finished for the stranger. The second challenge, drink, drink, drink as the crowd cheered as the challenger crushed the sixth barrel of the strongest Venrisian meat. Confident in his impending victory, the stranger reached for the next barrel of meat. There was none left to drink. The Wolf King had consumed the entire feast supply with ease. Months worth of meat. Anger started to grow on the stranger. Seeing the king burst him and glout for all to see, the stranger stood and berated the wolf king, calling him a drunk, never achieving a warrior's destiny. The Wolf King had enjoyed the sports, but no longer. The final challenge was laid before the men. The crowd parted as the Wolf King reached for his sword, jumping upon the banqueting table, challenging the stranger to combat. The stranger threw away his cloak, Golden armor pierced the room. All were blinded by its magnificence. He stood taller than any man. His energy could be felt by all. The crowd kneeled before his greatness. This was no mortal. He was the emperor of mankind. The Wolf King did not bow. Rushing the Emperor as the Thunder Wolves attacked their prey. The fight did not last long. With a mighty blow from his golden power glove, the Wolf King lay defeated. 
when he eventually came back to cognition. His face streaked with blood, his fangs chipped and broken. He came to his knees, admitting defeat to the God Emperor. The Wolf King, Lehman Russ, swore his loyalty to his father. He now knew he was the son of the God Emperor. Lehman Russ was educated by the Emperor, mastering the technologies of the Imperium. Learning to speak Gothic in only a few weeks' time, he met the first of his brothers. Horus was the first to be discovered. It did not take long to sense the jealousy from Horus, the disgust with the savage ways of the once Wolf King. Lehman Russ still desired to be friends with his brother, enjoying the sport of the brawl. Lehman had learned much from his new world. He had proved his loyalty to his father and to the Imperium. The God Emperor gifted his son a legion. Lehman Russ became Lord of the Sixth Legion the newly formed Space Wolves of the Legionis Astartes. Taking his legion into war, he was armed with the legendary Floss Blade Milnar. The blade could slice an ice mountain of Fendris in half. Lehman Russ would charge first onto the battlefield purging all those who dared stand in his way. Lehman Russ joined his father in battle, fighting with his legion during the Great Crusade. So many battles won, so many worlds conquered. The Space Wolves were fierce and cunning, true warriors without fear. The gifts of Lehman Russ in battle were many. The Space Wolves gained allies with the mighty Venrisian Wolves. Packs would fight on the front lines. Rivers of blood poured as they ripped through all enemies. Both men and wolf howled as they fought. In every battle, Lehman Russ would take heed. First on the battlefield and first to fight. Howling and ripping all who dared stand against the Space Wolf legions. There are so many tales of Lehman Russ to be told. Stories that will continue to the end of time. Until the wolf time. Glory to Lehman Russ. And glory to the Space Wolves. <laughs> <laughs>